In this lesson, we consider the question asked of Jesus by the temple leaders. The question was, by what authority do you do these things? Jesus drove the merchants out of the temple. The temple leaders questioned his authority. We look at their impudence, hypocrisy and dishonesty, and observe how Jesus answered, Matthew 21, 12-15, and 23-27. Jesus entered the temple courts and drove out all who were buying and selling there. He overturned the tables of the money changers and the benches of those selling doves. He said to them, It is written, My house will be called a house of prayer, but you are making it a den of thieves. Matthew 21 12-13 The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Matthew 21 14 to 15. Jesus entered the temple courts, and, while he was teaching, the chief priests and the elders of the people came to him. By what authority are you doing these things? They asked, and who gave you this authority? Matthew 21 23. Jesus replied, I will also ask you one question. If you answer me, I will tell you by what authority I am doing these things. John's baptism, where did it come from? Was it from heaven? or of human origin, Matthew 21 24-25. They discussed it among themselves and said, If we say it's from heaven, he will ask why we didn't believe John, but if we say it is of human origin, we fear the people, for they all hold that John was a prophet, Matthew 21 25-26. So they answered Jesus, We don't know, Jesus replied, Then I won't tell you by what authority I am doing these things. Matthew 21 27. This was the second time that Jesus had cleansed the temple of its money grubbing merchants. At the beginning of his ministry, he had done the same thing. In the temple, Jesus found the sellers of oxen, sheep, and pigeons, and the money changers sitting there, and Jesus made a whip from cords. He then drove them all out of the temple, with their sheep and oxen, and he spilled the cords of the money changers and overturned their tables. John 2 14 15. And he ordered those who sold the pigeons, take these things away, do not make my father's house a house of merchants. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me, John 2 16 and 17. So the Jews said to him, what sign do you show us to prove your right to do these things? Jesus answered them, destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up, John 2 18 and 19. On both occasions the same question was asked, what sign do you show us to prove your right to do these things? By what authority are you doing these things? John 2 18, Matthew 21 23. Jesus gave two different answers. In the first event, a cryptic answer, about this temple. In the second event, a cunning answer, about John the baptizer. Firstly let us consider the question's impudence. The religious leaders saw the signs and wonders that Jesus did. That should have been more than enough for them to honor the authority of Jesus. The blind and the lame came to him at the temple, and he healed them. But when the chief priests and the teachers of the law saw the wonderful things he did and the children shouting in the temple courts, Hosanna to the son of David, they were indignant. Matthew 21 14 and 15. The religious leaders would not acknowledge publicly the inevitable conclusion that one of them, Nicodemus, had earlier confided to Jesus, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God, for no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him, John 3, 2. The question was impudent, because Jesus had clearly shown by his signs and wonders that he had great authority from God, however, these religious leaders were jealous, their own authority was being shown up as not from God. Now secondly let us consider the question's hypocrisy. After all, where was their authority, for what they were doing? Those in charge of the temple were allowing its sacred precincts to become a place of money making. Animals were being sold for sacrifice. Opportunistic merchants and bankers had invaded God's house. Jesus was even moved to call them robbers. If anyone was going to question authority for what went on in the temple, surely these leaders should have questioned themselves. Who gave them authority to turn the temple into a market? Jesus was using the temple to heal and teach. His deeds were scriptural. Theirs were sacrilege. Now thirdly, we consider the question's dishonesty. 
Jesus' message of truth was being rejected just as John the Baptizer's had been. Jesus saw through the hypocrisy of these dishonest men. He knew they were rejecting him in the same way they had rejected John the Baptizer. So he threw that at them. He would answer their question if they would first answer his. Did John the Baptizer have authority from God to baptize for the forgiveness of sins? They could see the trap. By admitting John's authority they'd condemn themselves. By speaking against John, they would anger the populace who believed in both John and Jesus. So these religious leaders answered lamely, we don't know. They could not be honest one way or the other and face the consequences. So Jesus rejected their right to question him. Finally, a few words on the authority of Jesus. After his death and resurrection, the sign, Jesus said to his disciples, All authority has been given to me in heaven and on earth. Matthew 28, 18. That is the answer to the question. What authority does Jesus have? Paul says, God has highly exalted him, and given him the name that is above every name. Philippians 2, 9. In that name resides the authority of Christ over all. Let us not respond to Jesus with impudence, hypocrisy, and dishonesty but rather with reverence, genuine faith, and truthfulness. And so ends the lesson. Thanks for listening. You are welcome to visit simplybible.com.